Welcome back, everybody, to our Let's Play of Jack 2. Or as I like to call it, the Dark Jack Rises. Yes, it really is. Oh, Jack, I see that you know how to roll and jump. Admirable. Hmm. I have a feeling the Bane voice is going to be used quite a lot in the rest of this LP. So, for the next task, uh, we actually got tasked by Onan to go to an ancient outpost of Mar, which will help us reveal the location of the tomb of Mar. And, may, and at this point, Andrea and, ja or Andrea and Alex are asking the exact same question that I have been asking all the way that I played this game. Who the heck is Mar? We don't know. <laughs> I hate to tell you that, but we don't know. He's the man in the tomb of Mar. Yeah, exactly. He's the man that has the, the tomb named after him. And so now we are on our way to the tomb of Mar. And Alex is like, no, he's going to make us drive all the way. No, no, we're still going to have a magic cut at some point. At some point. At some point. It's one of those things where I kind of debated, do I want to do it while I'm running or do I want to just uh, cut it out? When I, after I get a car. Kind of well, thing, usually but. you could just cut it out because, I mean, it's not like we've seen driving before here. But you haven't. You no, could you have just cut the whole out. thing and just cut it Oh, that's why, there. because uh, we're actually really close to it. That's why I didn't cut it out. Is because Still no excuse. Really All right, so now we are on our way to the outpost of Mar, and I, I do this a couple of times when I'm actually live driving it. I'm like, no, it's this one, not that one. Fork in the road. Fork in the road. I don't believe it. <laughs> Great. Muppet movie reference. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, a Muppet movie. I just love that commercial. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry guys. It is... Well... Allergy season is always available for me, so that's what's going on with the cough. I'm not trying to cough in your ear. Okay, so now we are at the ancient ruins again, but we have to take our next detour. Well, while we're doing that detour, so what's everyone been doing the past couple of weeks, or what are we excited for? What have we been playing or watching recently? Uh, we'll get to that in a second because we're actually here. Really? Yes, we didn't have to go too far. Oh, good. I was hoping that it wouldn't take that long. Nope, here we go. Now that we have the key, the door opens. And now it's time to go in. Is there going to be metal heads? Actually, no, there isn't. It isn't that far from where we need to go. But the game had to force in more hoverboard. Look, everybody, I'm playing Tony Hawk and sucking <laughs> and at does. it. But this is a no hover zone. It is a no-hover zone, Alex! What on earth was I thinking? Now I want to play Back to the Future again. Gotta go back in time! Alright. Now, people might wonder why I put on the deaths. The reason is very simple. You guys need to see how broken the mechanics are for that stupid hoverboard. Because that's just going to happen even more. And sometimes it's funny just to watch. And listen to Drac rant. Uh, okay, so now we are pretty close to the outpost of Mar. Ooh, what could this be? Hmm. Now, people might remember the three relics that we pulled out earlier in the game. This is where we use them. Time for E.T. to phone home. Uh-oh, he's powering up his laser! In the immortal words of Judge Mills Lane, I'll allow it! I didn't break it! Oh no, we totally broke it. We're, we're gonna totally own it. Well, I'll be a monk house uncle. The light tower 
actually does exist. The beam of light is shining somewhere in the city. The tomb of Mar was right under our noses all along. And thanks to me, you found it. It's nice to know that the bird of Onan is taking credit for our success. Because, you know, that's the way things should be. So, yeah, everybody saw the giant statue of Baron Praxis. Underneath was the Tomb of Mar. Kind of makes Baron Praxis feel like a dork, doesn't it? He's like, hmm, I'm going to erect this giant monument to myself. Ah, uh, but, but, sir, there's, 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 like, this tomb right here. Uh, why don't we, why don't we just, uh, loot it? What are you, silly? We don't need to loot it! And by the way, your car is in a no-hover zone. <sighs> All right, back into the city. Because now it's time to go into the next big event, the Tomb of Mar. Let the story now commence! With bunches of rolling and all that. Because I'm weird like this that. I know we're gonna magic cut at some point. Come on. Magic cut. What is the icon? The skull you gotta head to? Yes, that's the Tomb of Mar. How fitting. I know I didn't run the whole way. What the crap? Oh, well. So some of the things that we've been watching recently, well, me and Alex can actually attest to this. We watched Interstellar, um, which you guys can see a review of it on Draken Shadow. And uh, we were, it's been two days. Do you still have the same thoughts you did uh, uh, before? Yes, yes, I do. Have you been recommending it to everybody? Uh, no, not really, just because I've n had nobody to recommend it to. I recommended it to Andrea, but she kind of looked at the three hours and went, mm. I never said I had any issues with it being three hours. It was just late in the day when I got home. Yeah, that's true. Besides, I don't know the story or what That's it's okay, like. nobody did. All right, this is the Tomb of Mar. Let us go down into the elevator. With some elevator music. Appropriate elevator music. You did it, Jack. You actually found Mar's tomb. Great, now what? We send this poor kid into a meat grinder? This is the day I've long awaited to finally hold the fabled precursor stone in my hands. You must be cautious, child. The tests of manhood are sure to be fraught with peril, and Mars Air must face them alone. It's okay, kid. You can do it. It's just a deep pitch black sure to be filled to the brim with painful death, old tomb. Nice work, Daxter. And he looks like he was about to cry. And I'll get you next time, Gadget. No. This child is too young to face the tests. What? No! Do something, Jack! Jack, remember the shore to be filled to the brim with painful death, Of course. Not? But it wouldn't be a Jack and Daxter game if we didn't go into the door fraught with peril. Great tree limbs. He's going to face the tests. No, he's gone to his death. Freeze! Decepticons, we have located the shard. <laughs> I didn't even see that one. Oh, nice one, Alex. So, welcome everybody to the Tomb of Mar. And now we must face the tests of manhood. Because, yeah, that's what you did back in the day. So, let's go ahead and face the first test. I am not going to lie. This took a lot of attempts, and we, we took out those attempts because we did not want to make this a horribly long trip. But suffice to say, this is this is not... This is your test for what you've learned thus far in the game. Spikes are instant death, I take it? No, they, they will just do a hit. But okay. obviously you want to conserve your hits because there are other dangers in the gym. Plus, you might be at risk of falling. Like that. Like that. This is one of those bugs that I like to, to present to people. When they design these things and they put the, 
poles so close to the platform. Sometimes uh, the game does not actually say, yeah, you're in the right place. And that is frustrating as heck. Oh, we just survived spikes. What now, Mega Man? What now? <laughs> what are, you, are you trying to knock the blue bomber? You're in my house now. You're in my house. We don't knock the blue bomber in my house. And obviously we have a bunch of evil looking spiders. And here's where the platforming gets interesting because it's platforming, Alex. It's platforming. It's quite the platforming. It's though. almost like this game is going back to its roots. Shocker. This almost seems, feels like a fun game. Almost. And uh, moving platformer, moving platforms. This is something right out of Jack and Daxter. Aren't there spikes? Nope, not anymore. Now that we've hit the button, it's just a moving platform. Okay, because I'm like, I think of those holes. Yeah, that's that was what my worry was when I did the first run, too, is that the spikes would still happen, so you had to time that as well as the moving platforms. Which I don't think that would be even easily possible. That, that would be shooting up the difficulty curve quite a bit, I think. And considering the Jack and Daxter is supposed to accommodate to a younger crowd, that might not be the best idea. Yeah. All right, more platforming. But I will admit, this this part of the game actually was real fun, just because it, it went back to the platforming rooms. I don't know why the rest of the game wasn't like this, but it wasn't. Oh, now the spikes come. Yes, and now we have a platform that we can step onto that isn't in the Dark Eco. So, we're gonna go ahead and go, and it looks like it wants us to go down, but first, there actually is a hidden precursor egg, or uh, precursor orb up there that I'm gonna go grab. And see, there wasn't, there. now there's no dark eco down there, so it's like hidden passage, ahoy. And if you're right on the edge, the spikes don't hit you. But you can hear the timing, right? So it's it's kind of a clockwork deal. And I died. Ouch. You were just impaled. Daxter, stop overdoing it. But thankfully, that was a checkpoint. So there are checkpoints in this game. There are just very few and far between. And trust me, there are some rants coming when it comes to the checkpoints. I'm just warning people in advance right now. Okay, let's go up and get this precursor orb. Of course I got him. Because you can only get the timing right so long. Okay, so we have the precursor orb. And now it's time to go into the depths. I'm just trying to figure out, like barely see and I'm like can I step down there yes All right. so now into another chamber of spiders it's almost like spiders are a theme here never would have guessed this looks familiar Nice one, Daxter. And as a unique feature, at this point we get to play as Daxter. Running away from the boulder. And it into the escape. Yep. Do 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 do. Oh, and it gets worse too. But he pretty much plays the Oops. same as everything else, but it's so it's so fast paced, it's really hard to keep track. This is really a lot of memorization kind of gameplay. But it's still very fun. So he plays very much like Dak uh, like Jack does. And in fact, that he has a double jump, he just doesn't have a gun. And there's, oh. there's no such thing as multiple hits. One hit, Daxter's dead. Oh, hi, giant big spider. Why did you send me going to tell me what's up? Maybe it's because like I did. She lobbed. I've been doing that a lot lately, actually. Oh, yeah, you can't get it. Just from the smaller spiders. But if you are within a certain range and that thing does that lunge, it eats you. 
course. This is the part of the game where it takes actually multiple attempts for me, because... The, first of all, this is a memorization type game, plus uh, you have to be fast. Oh, Which, if you faster. don't know the territory, can kill you. Let's go faster. Let's go faster. Yes, pretty much. We're just Let's go faster. Let's go faster. Okay, and then this is the second part of that. Where I actually have to use these webs as a ah, checkpoint. That was close! Checkpoint. So, boom, boom, and then see what you have to do there. Now I have to run all the way up to the next one. This was good level design, Naughty Dog! Ouch. The spider's butt killed me, what can I say? Yeah, this is this is one of the few things in Jack 2 that I wholly compliment. This is back to basics. This is Jack 1 all over again. Good work, Naughty Dog. I don't know why you had to do all these other features. There we go. Run away from the giant spider! And of course you got the really high, high beat music. That's really cool. And yay, we squished it! Da 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 da! Now we're back to Jack. And he's like, where did you go, Daxter? Oh, trust me, we're gonna have that moment a little later. So Jack has to follow a different path, one that's a little bit more platforming oriented. Now, if I remember correctly, when we were playing Jack 1, you had a specific question. Uh, when we were doing this pole swinging, why can't we do a double jump like we uh, like we can do normally? In this game, they fixed that. Because now you can do one. See, it's weird. I'm complimenting this game because it actually feels like a Jack and Dexter game again. We want to make sure we time this platform because I do not want to die. Okay, further, further up. That may be, this may be my only complaint about these areas. The, ca the camera rapidly switches. And so at that point, you just want to stop and let it readjust. But, you know, that's one of those things in 3D platformers that has never been truly fixed. The camera is usually always one of those issues we've always had. Okay. Yeah, that could be difficult. And this is actually the end of the trial. So now we have opened one of the locks. And turned out the lights. Yep. He's firing his laser. And it just so happens where Daxter is, is, is in the second trial. And I fell. What was that? Weird, weird controls. Oh, and just in case you didn't think these pools of water were dangerous enough, yes, they have electric eels in them. Okay, so on to the next trial. So what are you guys thinking of the Tomb of Bar gameplay? Does it does it feel better? Does it feel worse than what we've done before? This already feels better. Trust not your reliance. On okay, weapons. so this is actually a really interesting puzzle. What you're supposed to do is all the bugs that had red bellies, you're supposed to memorize where they are and then hit them. If you hit any others, you get a you get a penalty. Hit all of them, you open the door. How would you even know that? They don't say anything. No, like I said, when they're when they fall, they're on the on the back. Yeah. So you can see the red belly. Yeah, but how would you know specifically to go after the red ones? That I will I'll give you that one, Alex. It's not properly explained. All he says is trust not your reliance on weapons. Because mm -hmm. if you shoot even the ones with the red bellies, uh, you get a penalty. So I'll admit, that isn't properly explained, but still, the platforming mechanics right now are working really well. Yeah, the platform mechanics are good. This feels like a, a Naughty Dog game again. 
Well, I'm surprised you didn't get electrocuted when you're in the water like that. Um, the, the electricity is just above the water, so you're supposed to just dive. And unfortunately, if you get this wrong, not only do you get a penalty, but you can't advance. So I have to jump back. It's kind of like the final dungeon in Jack 1. And there we go. This opens up the second one. One of these colors just doesn't belong here. More spiders. Okay, this is where, in a lot of cases, I got a little frustrated with this mechanic. Because it's a little longer, plus there are areas of the water where you cannot dive. Like, right here. Which means you have to wade. Okay, this is actually the second test, so watch carefully. Use only your body and brain for this So all the red bellies. I actually found this as a unique puzzle challenge just because the bugs are moving, so you have to keep track of them. That'd be hard. It would, but it's also kind of challenging. True. All right, come on. And see, there ah. you go. Now I get hit because I came off right as the electricity was going. But that's okay, because now we're on to the next block puzzle. And I just guessed that. Wow, that was close. Yep. So what are you thinking of the platforming here, Andrew? Is it, is it better or is it similar to Jack 1 for you? Or do you actually like the, the, the Jack 2 core gameplay? I think they're both kind of similar in a way. They just have different mechanics. So is this better or worse? I think it looks a lot better. Okay. But then again, it's always fun to do different kinds of platforming. I do like it when they try to change the game up a little bit, yes. But um, there are a couple of times in this game, like with the hoverboard and the guns, it just doesn't feel like a jack game. Like that. But this is one of those times where they make up for it. Oh, and here's the final test of it which is a memorization challenge. Again. So here's what we gotta do. You gotta hit these tombstones and match the sounds. There you go, we just matched one. Okay, so this is a basically, this is your basic uh, match memory game. Like, yes. Only with sounds instead of pictures. Mm hmm Which is actually kind of unique because very yeah. few matchup games do that with sound. Yeah. I, I, I'm liking this. I'm digging this puzzle. Oh, there's our match. So we just got to find the other one. I'm so tough, I punch rock with my bare fists. Exactly. All right, we just got another match. We've got two more to do. And now we're down to the last one. Gee, I wonder which one they are. And we're back to the main room now. Boom. And now the door shall open. Very nice. 
So now we can go and claim the fabled Precursor Stone. So we just gotta surf over to, to where the door is. But I'm afraid we're gonna have to make you wait a week. So Aww. next week, we get the Precursor Stone.